Hi everybody, this is Ray with Moss Pawn and Gun and today also with Sonoran Desert Institute. We're going to be pillar bedding a Mosin Action into a Boyd's stock. We've got the pillars from Rock Solid Industries. These are already pre-cut for the Timney trigger cutout. Although this weapon doesn't have a Timney on it at the moment, it may have one in the future. The um, Action is actually a finish M39. As you can see, the uh, rear sight base is a little bit larger on this weapon than it is on an N9130 Russian. So there's been some provisions made, a little bit of inletting has been done on the stock to provide room for that particular sight setup. Other than that, there's no differences between the two. We're gonna be drilling the holes in the stock oversize so that we can install these pillars. As you can see, this is meant to be more or less a drop-in stock. Because of the variations in the Mosin, uh, oftentimes there's a little bit of fitting that needs to be done regardless of whether you pillar bed these or not. If you don't pillar bed, it's still highly recommended to bed the rear tang area with glass or steel and also the forward tang area because if you don't, it's very easy for one of these stocks to be split when the gun fires. So that being said, we're going to get started. We're going to start by drilling the uh, holes out for the pillars and leaving a bit of excess space so that they can self-center. And I'll show you how to keep the action centered within the stock. All right, we got our stock set up in the drill press. And what I've got in the chuck right now is a transfer punch. And the reason I put that in there is because I want the hole to stay in the same plane as it was already drilled. So you put your transfer punch in the hole there and make sure that it pushes through without dragging. And then when you um, put your drill bit in there, you'll be drilling along the same plane. So we're gonna take that out, switch it out for the drill bit, and we're gonna enlarge these holes a tad. All right guys, we got our cutter in place now. We're gonna go ahead and punch this hole out. And now we're gonna reposition the uh, stock in the vise and do the same thing with the rear hole. All right, if you um, mess with the Mosin any, you'll know that the, uh, the rear screw comes in a bit of an angle. So you're gonna have to tilt your stock in the vise, as you can see, to get that um, straight line cut in the rear hole. So I've got that set up. You can see it's moving freely all the way through and uh, pop this gauge pin out of here and put our cutter in place. Now because this is an interrupted cut, you're gonna to wanna to take it pretty easy as you go. It's kinda of open towards the front, so this thing may wanna chatter if you don't have your speed set up good and you don't have a good tight hold on this thing. So let's just take it easy on this one. All right, now that we've got both of the holes drilled out, we're gonna blow off all the excess uh, shavings and then uh, get these pillars glued into place. So we're gonna go set that up now. All right, guys, we got the um, holes for the pillars drilled out. We're gonna check the fitment, make sure that there's enough play in there for the epoxy to set and hold them in there firmly. I'm gonna go ahead and drop our action in place. All right, the pillars can come in from the bottom like so. like that, and then our bottom metal will fall into place here. Get that 
to snug up a little bit there. When you tighten these down, just make sure that your bottom metal is keyed into the receiver correctly. You don't want to bind anything up there. So just make sure that it's all laid there in place good before you crank down too tightly on any of these. All right, felt a good stop there. And let's see how this feels. A little tight there. I hear it creaking. What that's indicative of is a little bit of a tight fit in the tang area. So we're going to take this uh, back out and we're going to cut out some of this area because you want to glass bed this area anyway. So we're going to loosen this up, take it out and dremel that area behind the action where the rear tang sits in the stock so that it's a nice fit. You want at least a good eighth of an inch of material back there when you put your epoxy in place so that it doesn't snap out or crack when you get it all put together. So get this out and go over here to the Dremel tool and work that area out a little bit. Okay, sometimes if you want to, you can smoke the action. Um, you can use a variety of different things, candle, settling torch, but that'll give you an idea of what areas are touching when you put it in and out of the stock and it'll leave a smudge on the inside of the stock and you'll know where your areas are that you need to relieve uh, wood from. You guys are just going to open up this tang area a little bit through here, deepen it a little bit as well so that we get a nice pad. So I'm just going to cut this stuff out. We got a lot of that cut away there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want a little bit of an undercut actually so that you've got a nice pad of material that goes in the uh, stock when you put the epoxy down. So also I'm going to scuff up the area here just a little bit for the epoxy to give a little bit better bite. All right, at this point, it's pretty much ready for the epoxy to be set for the pillars to go in place. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some epoxy and get those pillars stuck in place. Um, make sure that you use plenty of release agent on your metal work. When we get done with that, they're gonna come back and put the rest of the components back on the gun, the trigger group, the interrupter assembly, and put it all back in the stock. If there's any inletting that needs to be done after that, we'll be able to tell by smoking the action in the stock area. But for this part, you wanna make sure that the action is already stripped down, nothing on it at all. That way you don't have any components interfering with the fitment. Anything that's in the way, once you get it put back together, can be dremeled out of the way easily enough. All right guys, if you wanna take a close look here, I'm gonna turn this up. You can see the gap that's at the back of the tang area. And that's when the action is sitting all the way against the recoil shoulder that's in the stock for the forward mounting lug. Uh, that area there is just fine. You can make it more, you can make it not much less. I wouldn't make it any less than that really. And I give a thick enough area so that it won't split out later on. There's also quite a bit of undercutting so that when this action sits down in there, it's gonna make its own pad and that will make for a good solid arrangement. Something else we're gonna do too, to help center the barrel in the channel is we're gonna take some tape and we're gonna wrap around the barrel and make it a little bit larger so that it fits in that channel and centers itself. We'll take that tape off after everything's bedded. All right, now that we got the um, tape around the barrel, it's helping itself center up in the channel. We're gonna take the uh, action out. We're gonna get our release agent and spray well over the, um, the surface area of all the metal work.
I'm going to do the same thing with the um, two mounting screws and the bottom metal. There's going to be some squeeze out on both ends of this, so you do need to make sure that all of your metal pieces are very well covered with the release agent. Otherwise, you're going to be breaking the stock to get it back apart, and you don't want to have to do that. It costs a lot of money, and it makes you spend a lot of extra time for no reason. All right, just a liberal amount of the uh, release agent on all the metal work. All right, because the stock has a large gap in the front, we're going to make a dam out of some modeler's clay. Uh, this is a nice material for doing this kind of work. It doesn't never harden up on you, and you can mold it and shape it just about anywhere. And it's pretty easy to clean up, too. You don't have to worry about it getting all sticky and all over the place. So we're just going to kind of shove that down in there like so. Take this pillar and use that kind of as a guide. Okay, that's really about all you need. You don't want to make it super tight fit because you want some epoxy around it. Probably going to be a little bit of epoxy that leaks into the pocket area for the Timney, but that's something you just have to clean out a little bit with your Dremel tool when you get done with it. All right, we've got the uh, Brownells steel bed. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. You just pick um, whatever mixing tool you want to use. I usually just use this little bench knife that I've got. Just take equal amounts of it. As you can see, I date the tops of mine. That way I know when they were opened and if they start, um, you know, if you don't use them up, give you a fair idea because there is a shelf life on this stuff. But, you know, if you run through the stuff like we do here, you don't really have too much worry about it going bad. But if you're just a home hobbyist and you don't um, use it often, it's probably not a bad idea to do that. So, although the, um, the consistencies are similar, um, one is much heavier than the other, so you'll notice that the volume inside the container is quite a bit more on the light color. And just take a reasonably measured amount of both. If you want to get real particular, you can certainly use measuring spoons if you like. But it's about enough of that particular version. And then I'm going to wipe off the knife here so we don't contaminate the other mix and then take out about an equal amount of the darker material as long as it's a pretty close mix 50 50 give or take you know percent here and a percent there not a big deal It'll work just fine. And just mix it up into a nice consistent color. And I'm going to cover these back up since we shouldn't need any more of that at the moment. This stuff gives you a pretty good bit of working time. Um, once you set it in place, you've got maybe a good 20 minutes or so to make sure everything is the way you need it to be. Um, beyond that, you pretty much it's not necessarily set. You could tear it back apart if need be, but uh, you're not going to be able to reuse it. You'd have to clean it out and start over. So just make sure that you got everything else in order before you put this stuff down because it is some strong epoxy and will most definitely glue parts together that you don't want glued together if you don't get it done right. So I'll go ahead and set the stock up here. As far as the way you you know do this and however you want to hold it is is whatever is best for you the um, pillars have little cuts on them and that's to hold more of the epoxy what i generally do is wipe a little bit of epoxy inside of each one of the holes to get a good bite on the on the wood and just kind of smear that around in there real good make sure that it's all over the inside it doesn't take a lot there it's kind of like when you tin 
an item before you braise or silver sort or you just want to make sure that there's a good base down throughout the whole inside and it's you know pressed into the wood grain as good as you can get it to be in there and you're going to do the same thing with the pillar just go ahead and slather that nicely and it can be kind of messy you're going to get it all over the place the first couple of times you do this but keep your paper towels handy stuff's real viscous, it's real sticky, so it's going to get on and every on everything you touch. So I'm going to slide that in there as long as we got enough on it. What I'll often do is use the screw as somewhat of a guide, kind of a handle in a way to help put that in there. Okay. There's going to be some push out at the top, which is just fine because you're going to want that to fill in the area of the tang. I'm going to go ahead and lay some more in there for that reason. Just keep in mind, you don't necessarily want to fill this area. It's kind of like filling the bathtub all the way up to the top and then climbing into it. You can have a bit of overflow if you try that. Just put just enough in there for fill out. It's better to have a little bit of squeeze out than not enough because you certainly don't want to have to go back in there and put more material in because you'd end up wasting a whole bunch because you'd have a really messy cleanup just trying to get it apart and back together so nice thing about this stuff is it's thick enough that it doesn't run so you can set it up and and such without a whole lot of grief i'm gonna do the same thing with the front and get that laid in place Make sure you have all your stuff ready to go. You don't want to have to stop in the middle of this. You want to go ahead and be able to put it all in place. You know, you got about, like I said, about 15 minutes to work with all of this area that we're working on at the moment. Any longer than that, and you may have a little bit of a setup issue with the epoxy. I generally end up mixing more epoxy than I need, and that's just due to the fact that if you have it already made, you don't have to waste the time trying to make some more and I find it's a little bit wasteful, but I'd rather do that than to have to go back and forth manu making more and more and more just because I didn't have enough the first try. Yes, I'm going to put more release agent on that screw, but a little bit more epoxy down in here. Popsicle sticks work great for this too. I'm just used to using this tool for this, so it's whatever you got handy works. What you really want is enough epoxy so that there's not going to be any air pockets and gaps that you have to go back in and cut out and refill because 
those can be potential areas where the bedding can break. I'm going to flip her over real quick. Look at the bottom side, make sure we've got enough there. Oh yeah, got plenty of push through on that. Let me clean a little bit of that out. Alright guys, we got the epoxy laid in place. We're going to put our action and our bottom metal in and our screws and then we're going to let it set up and uh, we're going to go take a lunch break while we do that. But Alright, I've got a uh, release agent here. A uh, little touch up here and there is not going to hurt anything. You can't, can't overdo this stuff, but you can certainly underdo it. That's not a good thing. Alright, I'm going to drop her down in here. As straight down as possible is great. That way you don't have a lot of extra movement and push out and everything. Um, go ahead and put your tang screw in place to help align everything. I'm going to flip her over. Put our bottom metal in. See that pillar pushed a little bit in the rear, but that's all right. This will line up here just fine. A little bite there. See the squeeze out, that's that's exactly what you want. Just enough material to squeeze out so that it's gonna fill in real nice. Get this rear one pulled down a little bit. Go ahead and run this front one down good until you feel it stop against that pillar. And it's gonna be a hard stop. There's not gonna be any more turning, not without breaking something. And then turn it back over and you're going to do the same thing with the rear. All that stuff will ooze right out of there and we'll just brush a little bit of that off with paper towel here in just a moment. All right, we're gonna start hard stop on that pillar. Keep your whole roll of paper towels around. This stuff's gonna be necessary. One thing you wanna make dang sure of on this rear tang is because the um, epoxy's gonna wanna roll over the top. Get a um, nice tool and clean that off because if it creates a mechanical bond in there, you're screwed. End up having to fill that tang after it breaks out. And once you get most of that out of there, you can just make Make it a little smoothed over with some paper towel. All right, we don't have any other push out on the top, so we're gonna flip it over, clean up what we've got on the bottom a little bit. Not too bad, just enough so that it fills in really good. All right, this is kind of like cleaning up your one-year-old after a diaper accident. You have to kind of check everywhere because it gets everywhere. Once you're sure that you've got all of it, go back and check again because any of it that lays on top of the wood, especially if you're working with a stock that's already finished, can be a definite blemish that's hard to remove. So get yourself a bright light, 
look over it real well and make sure that you don't have any epoxy that transferred around maybe from your paper towel or just leached out in an area you didn't expect it to and just uh, give it a good clean up and now this stuff's gonna have to sit up for I'm gonna let it probably sit up overnight that's always the best if you can just give it as much time as you've got on your hands but absolute minimum of six hours absolute minimum because if you start taking it out before that the bedding is going to move it may chip out and you're just going to have to start the whole process over again and none of us like doing this job twice so there's that first part of it what we'll do once we get it set up we're going to come back and look at it and make sure that there's any flashing that needs to be removed that area around the chimney cutout and that pillar is definitely going to have to be trimmed up a bit, but very straightforward. You can get in there with the standard uh, burr on your Dremel tool and clean that out with very little issue. So guys, um, hope you enjoyed this first part of this little segment and uh, we'll be back to you shortly. All right, now we've got the Mosin already set up. It's been sitting overnight. The epoxy has set and solidified just fine. So we're going to go ahead and pop the screws loose and see how this action has um, set up in the stock. So go ahead and get these loose. <clears throat> Sometimes these screws will get a little bit tight depending on um, how much epoxy seeped into the threads. One thing to do that you might consider would be to, after the stock's been sitting for about two or three hours, is to go and turn the screws loose and then retighten them and that'll keep the threads from sticking in the um, epoxy if there's not enough release agent before the epoxy sets completely up. And I did do that yesterday. I didn't mention it before, but it's something that uh, goes a long way towards making these come out a little bit easier. Got that one loose. Let's see if this top screw will come out. pop it back upside down and see if this bottom metal will come loose just give it a few taps and lift at the same time there we go it came right out as you can see looks like very little epoxy stuck to the bottom metal a few little areas there but that'll knock right off and Take a look here in the bottom of the action. You can see the epoxy filled out real nicely in the areas where it needs to be. You don't have to worry too much about the side area of the box, but the rear and forward segment do need to be bedded pretty solidly, and that looks like it filled in quite nicely. All right, now we're gonna take the, um, the action and the stock together. We're gonna grab it firmly like this, and we're going to find a padded section of the bench that I've got over here. We're going to give it a few taps. It should break away without too much trouble. There we go. All right. Again, very little adhesion, almost none, as far as the uh, metal goes and the interior filled out real nicely as well. You can see how you've got some squeeze up here and how the whole area back here filled in real nicely. And that's exactly what you want. That's gonna keep this action nice and solid in the stock. Also the pillars, although you can't see the tops and the bottoms of them very well because of a little bit of epoxy skim, they are there and they're very solidly in place now. So that's pretty much finished up the main thing that we're going to do is just come in here with a dremel and maybe dress a little bit of these sharp edges out possibly with a small file but you just don't want to have a lot of sharp edges that are going to break over so let's go ahead and dress those down put a little bit of a bevel on the um, edges where the pieces go in place but besides that that's pretty much it if you have any questions feel free to shoot us an email or give us a call here at the shop and again Check out uh, Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got some great 
curriculum. Um, if you're a GI, they've got plenty of information for you on the GI Bill and the uh, amount of money that they will take for the different classes. Uh, very, very reasonable and you can get up to a two-year associate's degree. So check us out and uh, thanks again for watching.